Hi, this is Brian Hyde, and I'm checking in from Las Vegas. Very interesting morning in the courtroom today. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you a brief recap, but uh, trust me, this was a pretty this was a pretty unexpected day. The trial was supposed to begin this morning, but um, actually, it's now been pushed back to next Tuesday, the 14th at 8:30 in the morning, and and this is the reason why. First of all, the defendants were in the courtroom. Uh, I just want to report to uh, Ammon and uh, Cliven. Both were wearing um, their jail scrubs. Ryan Payne and Ryan Bundy both were wearing suits. And I know there were some people questioning, why, why is that? Is there a message being sent? If there is, I don't know what it is. But last Friday, we talked about how there was some evidence that had come forward or there was some uh, questions about government handling of evidence. Specifically, it was brought up that uh, video camera feeding live video and monitored by the FBI, among others, had been set up overlooking the uh, Bundy family home. This was back in April of 2014. The questions that have arisen from the prosecution's um, either failure to provide that material or unwillingness to provide that material spilled over into court today. And before the jury could be brought in and opening statements could begin, the judge uh, heard a couple of different motions by defense attorneys, and there were some huge concerns. There were some very um, serious concerns about, well, what other evidence hasn't made it to the defense? I mean, this is important. They, they need this information if they're going to uh, properly defend themselves. So I'm going to read a couple of my notes here. Um, the U.S. attorney, Stephen Myrie, insisted the video camera was set, set up and taken down in less than a day. He downplayed it. This was no big deal. But uh, the FBI agent who testified last Friday, and, and the judge went right back to the transcript and, and looked at this, the agent testified it was taken down after four days, possibly knocked over, possibly rendered inoperable. But the, the bottom line is what uh, Myrie was saying did not jive with the official court record. Surveillance was being done on a daily basis according to the operational plan. Um, Ryan had uh, motioned to compel discovery on this clear back in September, and he pointed out to the court today, when I made that motion, I was mocked for doing so. And the, then Morgan Philpot pointed out that uh, there were actually um, multiple cameras and wanted to get to the bottom of who was in charge of those cameras, who would have that uh, video footage. And even the judge agreed, it doesn't make sense that these, uh, these cameras would be set up and would be monitoring traffic or people or conversations or whatever it was they were doing if somebody wasn't taking notes or recording that. It just doesn't make sense. And so finding out who was in charge of that camera, finding out what, if any, evidence may exist, whether it be um, exculpatory, could, could actually shed light on the innocence of the defendants, or inculpatory, or could incriminate them. Um, either way, the judge was having huge reservations. You could see the wheels turning in her head as she was thinking, oh, what, what do I do with this? Um, and finally she said, we're going to have to continue this trial and get this resolved first and foremost. It, it was big. You could see the frustration on Stephen Myrie on his face. Um, time and again he rose up, I don't even know why we're talking about this. This, this doesn't really um, impact you know, the, the case, but the judge said otherwise. And you could see his frustration, you could see the judge going, whoo, this is, this is a game changer. And, but the most telling thing, this was the part that I thought was, was most interesting of all. Last week, the courtroom had, eh, you know, a handful of journalists there from various media sources. Today, it was packed. There were so many people in there. And when it came out that the trial was going to be continued till next week, and in fact, there's, there's going to be um, a hearing tomorrow at one o'clock in the afternoon. There's uh, the government response to the motions uh, regarding their handling of this evidence or withholding this evidence is due on Friday at noon. But when that came out, you could feel this uh, shiver go through the courtroom and there was this mass exodus of reporters heading for the door, uh, I guess so everybody could be the first you know, to, to break the story. So uh, the trial is tentatively set to begin Tuesday the 14th, 8.30 in the morning. There is a good possibility that another motion to dismiss is going to come up possibly before the end of this week. It's a big, big deal. Two other quick things that I want to mention. One was the fact that uh, those who are hearing impaired 
are no longer being afforded um, devices within the courtroom so that they can hear what's going on. There's, there's always at least two or three people with hearing impairment. For whatever reason, they're being told, well, all those devices are busy The you know, in other uh, courtrooms or, or whatever. But uh, it was very sad to see people straining, trying to hear what was going on and unable to do so. The second thing, and this is, this is a really big one, Ryan Bundy stood and made a motion that uh, he and the other defendants should be reconsidered for pretrial release. And the judge agreed to have a hearing in which they will consider releasing these guys. Now, it may be to a halfway house. It may be with you know ankle monitors or un otherwise under supervision. But um, if you are a person who exercises your faith, pray. Pray that uh, the appropriate hearts will be softened and that uh, these individuals may have a chance to enjoy their first taste of freedom in more than 600 days. That was a lot to cover. There's more coming, and uh, we'll be back to tell you more as we continue our coverage of the trial.